She's a performer, a comedian, but she's also an activist and does a lot of great work similar to Access to Independence and the Peachtree Pine Shelter. She does, she outreaches many levels. Please come up. She's with her significant other. Hey, Cat Siri. Jose. Cat. Give a round of applause to the handful of people that are here. Staff or Cat Santa Maria. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, hello. My name is Cat Santa Maria, and I have a disability. I'm a blonde. You know, my husband says that I have just enough vision to get in trouble, and he is so right. When I travel, I like to travel, and I use a lot of hair care products. It takes a lot to deal with this mess. Um, so when I travel in the hotel, I have used hand lotion for shampoo, body wash for conditioner, once I even used mouthwash for hand soap. Ooh, minty fresh. <laughs> Living at home isn't much better because I'll come home and find all the bottles rearranged in the shower. Living with a husband and a dog, no, two dogs and a cat, it gets kind of interesting when you don't see very well. I've got to say, living with my cat is the easiest. She meows when I come home and greets me. She meows when I walk in a room. She doesn't snore. She doesn't hog the covers. She doesn't pant like the dogs. And she doesn't get in my path when I'm walking around the house. Like my guide dog did one day when I was walking through the kitchen with two full glasses of water and I fell over him on my hands and knees. I did not spill a drop. Don't know how. <laughs> so I'm actually up to version, now let's see. I've had to upgrade to version three of the seeing eye dog, all golden retrievers, all goldens. Uh, they have a weird sense of humor, which kind of fits with me. Um, my first dog was a redhead, so of course, I dyed my hair red. My, uh, we, we were really sassy and smart, did all kinds of awesome things together. Um, now, Guide Dog School teaches you an important lesson, that is to trust your dog. Nobody says a word about trusting your man. So here I am through a parking lot coming up upon a light pole and I have my dog's harness in my left hand and he's trying to guide me around it and all of a sudden my husband grabs me around it and yeah you guessed it so that's a good reason um, my second dog was a blonde and uh, even he thought I was dumb, okay? He would go, if I said go left, he'd go right. If I said right, he'd go left. I don't know which one, but one of us directionally stacked. He also would take me all the way around the block to avoid my very favorite clothing store. He was a guy. And also, but when we were going around town, the joke would end up being on him because, because people would laugh at us and point and say, oh, look, there goes the blonde leading the blonde. <laughs> now, my third dog, my third dog is a girl. She's a golden. I don't know. We're kind of new together. I don't know what kind of trouble we're going to get into. But I can tell you this, she does not like doing comedy. My other dogs would come up with me the first time and probably the very last time I will have her on stage with me. She tried to exit stage left. 
So now I have another tale about an animal. When um, my husband and I live in Rome, Georgia, as Jerry said, and I am the director up at an independent living center, just like Access to Independence, and we're all sisters, and we all help people who have disabilities. So we lived in this really, really old Victorian home, 1890s, and we spent a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, especially tears, restoring this thing. We did everything, plumbing, wiring, bathrooms, kitchens, floors, you name it. But I guess we missed something because one day I'm at home, I'm working in the home office, there was an adjacent bathroom, and I hear splash, splash, whoop, whoop. And I'm like, what? Did I leave the, the lid up, you know, are the dogs in it? Um, no, they're over there snoring like usual. Uh, and it keeps going, so whoop, whoop, whoop. I, I keep thinking I'm going to see the toilet bulging in and out, like those old scrubbing bubble commercials. Whoop, 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 whoop. Well, okay. I gather up my courage. I walk in there. I go, oh, my gosh, I know what I'm going to see. I don't want to know what I'm going to see, but I know what I'm going to see. And I lift the lid very cautiously and drop it down. Because there was something big, yes. It was big enough I could see it. And brown, yeah, swimming, yes, swimming in our toilet. Lord of mercy. So I'm thinking to myself, now, how, how can I get this rat out of the toilet? What can I do? Because I'm alone, of course. Well, I think about the barbecue tongs. But I'm thinking, wow, if I drop that rat, wet rat in house, not a good thing. The dogs are still snoring. The cats hate water. Not going to work. Thought about dangling a rope over the commode. Same problem. Wet rat in house. Not good. All right, so finally, finally I get it together and I call my husband at work. And I go, honey, I think I'm kind of hyster hysterical, but I, I think there's a rat in our commode. And he goes, oh, okay, honey, sure, I'll come home. You know, first of all, love you guys, but you're never home and we need you. <laughs> Furthermore, I found out after he got home, after waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, he'd gone to Home Depot on the way home. Well, he did get a reacher, a little grabber tool. That was clever. And he gets home and then we have the wet rat and house discussion. So we call animal control, they're closed. We call our plumber. They laugh at us. They say there's absolutely no way. I think they're still telling that joke. So, okay, we Google it. Do you know how many ways there are on Google to talk about, find ways to get a rat out of your commode? Hundreds. I kid you not. I challenge you right now. Google how to get a rat out of a commode. You will be amazed. A lot of them were very inhumane, and that's just not me. It wasn't the rat's problem for getting in our commode. Um, but, uh, yeah, and they even had one warning. Don't shoot the toilet. <laughs> now, you know, you know somebody had to have tried that. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so they finally came up. I, we came on a solution that looked pretty pretty innocuous. It was to put like one drop of dishwashing detergent in the toilet and it apparently cuts the grease on the rat's fur enough that it can swim out the way it swam in. And it worked. I know it worked because I went down to the river next day and there was the rat swimming along and blowing bubbles. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.